Hey, this is Arjun, CEO of Doula, and in today's video, I'm going to walk through how to open an LLC as a non-US resident. That's right. You can open a US limited liability company from anywhere in the world, even if you do not live in the United States. We've personally helped hundreds of founders from around the world launch, maintain, and grow their US LLC. And while we've done that, we've compiled a list of the most commonly asked questions on how to file an LLC as a non U.S. resident. So if you want to learn more about launching a U.S. company, keep on reading and follow the steps below to get started today. In this video, I'm going to cover a few very important things. The benefits of a U.S. LLC, how to form a U.S. LLC, the best state to form an LLC in, what a registered agent is, a U.S. address, a U.S. phone number, how to get a U.S. bank account, how to get an EIN, whether you should use Stripe or PayPal, what US tax filing requirements are, and what LLC annual reports are. That's a lot to cover, so buckle up, grab a cup of coffee, we're gonna dive right in. And if you wanna get started right now, get a US LLC, get a US bank account, and set up payments, click the links below to get started. Let's start with formation. You can use a company like Doula to get your EIN and LLC in less than one week. If you don't have a U.S. social security number, it can take longer, up to four weeks on average. And that's because you have to fax certain forms to the IRS. You can also file on your own to get an LLC through the state of Delaware or Wyoming or any other state in the U.S. as a non-U.S. resident. Next up is banking. When it comes to opening a U.S. business bank account from outside the U.S., there are a few banks that can support you. Banks like Mercury or Relay can support non-US residents who have or don't have a US social security number. After that comes payments. A company like Stripe helps you accept payments through your e-commerce site or any location where you're based. And last but not least is a phone. A company like OpenPhone will help you get a US phone line from anywhere in the world. You're probably wondering, okay, I now know I can start a U.S. LLC from outside the U.S., but what are the benefits of choosing the U.S. as the place to start my business? The U.S. has one of the best reputations in the world for being business friendly, even for non-U.S. citizens. The U.S. also has a very competitive corporate tax system and a relatively easy way to form an LLC. Many people who form an LLC in the U.S. say, wow, that was easier than forming a company in the country which I live in. One of the biggest perks is the low startup costs in comparison to many other countries around the world, as well as the prestige of having a company based in the U.S. You might be wondering now, can a non-U.S. resident actually start a U.S. LLC? One major common misconception about creating U.S. companies is that you have to be a U.S. citizen to start one and that you have to have a U.S. SSN or social security number. This is false. You do not have to be a U.S. citizen, be a U.S. resident, i.e. a greenholder, or have a U.S. SSN. This means you can indeed start a U.S. LLC as a non-resident, online, and as a foreigner. And you can get a U.S. LLC, a U.S. business bank account, access to U.S. payments, and more. The truth is, one of the biggest benefits of being a non-US resident starting a US LLC is that an LLC is a pass-through entity, meaning that taxes can pass through to the owners. This means that your business would not be subject to US tax as long as your LLC is 100% owned by non-US tax residents, either natural or legal persons, has no US presence or economic substance. The income must not be effectively connected. At this point, you also might be wondering, what is an LLC? An LLC gives you a business entity, the ability to set up a bank account, take payments, and as the name limited liability company might imply, it protects you from liability. Why is that important? Well, with an LLC, only the assets owned in the name of the LLC are subject to the claims of business creditors, including lawsuits against the business. The personal assets of the LLC members cannot be claimed to satisfy business debts. For most people, this is the most important reason to form an LLC. What this means is that in the case of a lawsuit, your personal assets are protected. 
Having that veil of protection or that separation between personal and business is critical because no one ever expects or wants a lawsuit to happen, but the LLC and the liability protection can protect you in that downside scenario. You also might be wondering, should I form an LLC or should I form a C-Corp? You might have heard about C-Corporations and a common question we get all the time is should I form an LLC or a C-Corp? I'm going to answer that now. If you are looking for liability protection and flexibility, limited admin upkeep and tax flexibility, an LLC is a great choice for new businesses. LLCs are considered easier to start and maintain. If you are currently raising or will need to raise US venture capital and take a company public, a C corporation is a great choice. US investors require a C corporation to invest venture capital. At the end of the day, it's your business, your choice. And we also have a full blog post which dives into this topic in much more detail. But to summarize, the recommendation again is if you are looking to raise US venture capital, a Delaware C Corp is oftentimes the way to go, as this is required by US investors. But if you are not looking to raise US venture capital, an LLC is easier to maintain and cheaper and gives you all the benefits in terms of limited liability protection and the ability to get a business bank account. At this point, you're ready to go and you've decided an LLC is the best type of entity to form. The next question is what is the best state to form my LLC in? The best state to form your limited liability company in is nearly always your home state. This is because your company is doing business primarily in that state, whether it's a physical business or an online business. Doing business quite literally means you're physically based in the state. Now, there are two exceptions to this rule. Exception number one is if you are a non-US resident, in which you can choose any state. We recommend Wyoming or Delaware in this case. The second exception is if you have a real estate LLC. Essentially, the home state rule doesn't apply here. States with additional benefits other than your home state include Delaware. Delaware offers the business owner anonymity. Delaware is unique in that it does not require the owner to list their name on their entity formation documentation. Wyoming allows the business owner to list a nominee as the owner of the LLC other than their own name. Here is another blog post that dives into this topic in much more detail. At this point, as a non-US resident, you are now aware that you can actually choose any state in the US to form your LLC. Wyoming and Delaware are typically the two most popular states. So Wyoming versus Delaware, what do I recommend? I recommend Delaware only if you have plans in the future to convert your LLC into a C-Corp, if you're trying to then raise venture capital from US investors, or you really want the prestige of saying your company is from Delaware. Some customers say this matters to them, and if it does, it is your business, your choice. Otherwise, I recommend Wyoming. Why? Wyoming is the most popular state for non-resident entrepreneurs who run online businesses, e-commerce businesses, or are business owners who want an easy and simple way to form and manage their company. It's the most popular state among doula customers, has lower annual fees, $60 in Wyoming versus $300 in Delaware. It has a low filing fee of $100, and it was the first state to ever create the LLC. Also, don't sleep on Wyoming's prestige. It has a friendly business environment and has even been called the Switzerland of the Rocky Mountains. If you want to get more in the weeds on the differences between Wyoming and Delaware, check out this guide. And with that, here are the eight steps to open an LLC as a non-US resident. Step one, decide how to form your LLC. You have a few options here and I'll walk through each of them. Option one is doula. If you're looking for a one-stop shop long-term solution that helps you not only form your LLC, but also helps you get a registered agent, a US address, an EIN, a phone number, helps you with your IRS internal revenue service tax filings and more, plus serves as a long-term partner, check out Doula. Another option is you can file on your own with the state. You are able to form an LLC by filing directly with the state online. To do so, you will first need to do a couple things. You'll need to pick a registered agent. You can do this via a Google search and a registered agent is required in each state for an LLC. They charge yearly fees, depending on the state, from $25 up to $200 from what I've seen. You'll also have to pick an LLC name. Search in your state registry if the name is taken too. It also must end with LLC or L.L.C. 
LLC is usually the most popular. You'll have to file your LLC online. You can do this directly through the state as well and go on Google to find the specific state link. Each state has different filing fees, which can range from 50 to over $500. It can take several days, if not a week plus for the state to get back to you. The state will send you your formation documents, which will include your operating agreement as well. If you would like to file on your own in Wyoming or Delaware, here is a guide on how to file in Wyoming and note there is a $100 filing fee with the state. And here is a guide on how to file in Delaware. Note there is a $90 filing fee with the state. Step two, how to get a US mailing address. There are a ton of different options out there to get a physical address for your mail that you can operate remotely. You can use a tool like Virtual Post Mail or Doula provides a US mailing address as part of their package. Step three, how to get an EIN. You can typically apply for an EIN easily, but there might be a waiting period depending on your situation. Want to see how long it is currently taking to receive an EIN in real time? Check out this page with updates from the IRS, or you can contact Doula at any time to ask timelines that we're currently seeing. You might be wondering, can I apply for an EIN online? In order to apply for an EIN online, the person applying must have a valid taxpayer identification number, a social security number, or an ITIN, also known as an individual taxpayer identification number. If you do not have a social security number or an individual taxpayer identification number, which international founders might not have, then unfortunately, you have to mail or fax an application in to get an EIN for your US company. What is the overall process to apply for an EIN? With a social security number, if you have an SSN, you can go to this website and apply for your EIN online. If all your information is valid, you will receive your EIN in minutes, typically within the same day. Without an SSN, if you do not have a social security number, you must fill out Form SS4, application for an EIN, and fax it to the IRS. It can take up to 8 to 11 weeks from the day of submission to get this form back, but typically, if there aren't IRS delays, we see it take about 2 to 4 weeks. Can I digitally sign Form SS4, application for an EIN? Due to recent events, the IRS has relaxed some wet signature requirements. You can read more here in this IRS newsroom update. But if it's helpful, from the doula side, digital signatures have worked with no issues for us. And we have been able to send in SS4s with digital signatures and have been receiving EINs with them as well. If you'd like to dive more into this topic, you can read more about this here. What is the latest timeline for how long it will take to get an EIN back? Check out this website for real-time updates on how long it will take to get an EIN. And you can also live chat Doula online to see the latest timelines that we're seeing. If you're skeptical about these delays and wondering, can I confirm it for myself or check in on the status of my EIN application? It's possible. And you may want to contact the IRS to check in on your EIN application. Here are the steps to do that. Call the business and specialty tax line at 1-800-829-4933. The hours of operation are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. local time, Monday through Friday. Follow the instructions to discuss EINs. You will need your SS4 form, readily available to confirm any information the IRS might ask for. At this point, you might be wondering, what is an EIN versus an ITIN versus an SSN? These acronyms can get pretty confusing, so I thought it'd be helpful to define them before we continue on. We also have a full blog post on this topic as well. What is an EIN? EIN stands for Employer Identification Number. The IRS issues an EIN to a business for tax reporting requirements. And you also need an EIN to open a US business bank account once you have opened an LLC. Check out this blog post here on how to get an EIN from anywhere in the world. What is an SSN? SSN stands for Social Security Number. The US SSA, Social Security Administration, issues an SSN in order to identify a US citizen, permanent resident, or temporary non-immigrant worker. What is an ITIN? ITIN stands for Individual Taxpayer Identification Number. The IRS issues an ITIN to people who have a US tax filing or informational reporting requirement and are not eligible for an SSN. How do I get an ITIN slash do I need one? Check out this blog post here on how to get an ITIN. Unless you are filing a US tax return, 
or trying to set up a US PayPal account, you don't need an ITIN. More on this coming up in how to set up a Stripe or PayPal account. In summary, think of your EIN as the social security number for your business. The same way a social security number designates who an individual citizen is in the US, an EIN designates an official business in the US. And the ITIN is required for any certain tax filings due for your business if you are not a US resident and do not have a US social security number. Step four, how do I get a US phone number and do I need one? You will need a US phone number to apply for a US bank account and set up your Stripe account and more. Here are some of the main reasons why a US phone number is important to get. Business verification. When applying for a bank account, Stripe or PayPal account, Amazon seller account, and more, a US phone number is required. Proof of location. Many services will require a utility bill as proof of location to conduct business. If you want to sell on Amazon, this is a must. Customer support. Sometimes customers want to talk to people rather than read a website to search for answers. Professionalism. Give your LLC an added element of professionalism with a US business phone number. Instead of an international cell or no number at all. Simply put, it's more official to have a separate business number versus using your personal number for business too. In terms of phone number options, there are many providers online. A quick Google search can show you a ton of different possibilities, but we recommend using open phone. Step five, how to set up a US business bank account. Unfortunately, there are very limited options when it comes to banking in terms of who can support non-US residents without a social security number. No requirement to travel to the US. We recommend the two following banks that can support founders in the above situation. The first is Mercury and the second is Relay. What are some other banking options? If you're curious about other banking options and what their requirements are, check out this guide, which outlines a list of banks which one can open and what their requirements are. In this guide, you can see all of the requirements for the following banks. WISE, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Lilly, First Republic, Novo, Brex, and more. Once I have a bank account, should I use Stripe or PayPal? Stripe does not require a US SSN and only requires an EIN as formation documents. PayPal, on the other hand, does require a US SSN or ITIN in addition to an EIN and formation documents. Unfortunately, if you do not have a US social security number or ITIN, PayPal is not an option. Given the above, we have seen from thousands of founders globally that Stripe is a much more convenient option. Step six, how to set up a US Stripe account. To open a US Stripe account, you'll need the following. An LLC, an EIN number, a physical location in the country of your EIN, a phone number in that country, a government ID from any country. You should also make sure you are not on Stripe's list of restricted businesses. As long as you don't see your business on the list, there is little reason to believe you won't be able to work with Stripe. To read more in full about how to open a US Stripe account, as well as learn more about their exact requirements as directly shared by Stripe, check out this page. Step seven, how do I set up a US PayPal account? To create a business PayPal account, you'll need the following information. An LLC, a company phone number, a company address, an EIN number, a social security number, or an individual taxpayer identification number. To read more in full about how to open a US PayPal account, as well as learn more about their exact requirements as directly shared by PayPal, check out this page. Step eight, how to file taxes and stay compliant with the IRS. Taxes and IRS filing requirements can be extremely confusing. So below is an overview of the required filings plus key deadlines to keep in mind, to stay on top of taxes and or IRS filing requirements for your LLC. For the latest up-to-date requirements for US tax filings, check out this guide. If you are a foreign single owner slash sole proprietor, also known as a foreign single member LLC, this is what you need to know. If you own a foreign single member LLC and you are not considered as engaged in US trader business, you are not required to file 1040 NR or pay personal income taxes. As a non-resident alien, aka a foreigner, you are only required to file and pay taxes in the US if you have FDAP income for which withholding was not done at source or have effectively connected income with US trade or business. However, 
As of 2017, you still report information like a corporation. See section 1.6038A-1 for more. Therefore, unless you have registered as a corporation, all single member LLCs are subject to these requirements. Failure to file or an incorrect filing does incur a minimum penalty of $25,000. So it's very important you either get this filing done right or work with a partner like Doula to make sure you get it submitted on time and accurately. These are the key filings that are typically included. Preparation of pro forma, Form 1120. Preparation of foreign owner report, Form 5472. These are the key dates to keep in mind. April 15th, the deadline for LLC tax returns when filing as foreign owned disregarded entity, Form 1120 and 5472, or to request a six month extension of time to file. April 15th, deadline to file individual tax returns for foreign individuals or to request an extension for an extra six months to file your return. If you are a multi-owner LLC or multiple member LLC, these are the key filings to keep in mind. Preparation of a partnership return, Form 1065. These are the key dates you should keep in mind as a multiple member LLC. March 15th is the deadline for partnership and LLCs owned by multiple members to file tax returns, Form 1065, or to request a six month extension of time to file. Do I have to pay a professional CPA to file any needed forms? No, you are not required to do so, but folks sometimes find these forms confusing or very stressful to fill out. So working with a professional is always an option to remove some stress here. To read more about this in more detail, plus see an option for professional help, check out this guide. At the end of the day, time is money and stress is galore when running a business. So if you can outsource something like tax filings to a trusted professional, it helps you focus on what you do best while Doula handles the rest. So be sure to contact Doula if you have any questions or need any help with your US tax filing requirements. Where do I submit my LLC annual report slash filing? As mentioned above, in Wyoming, there's a $60 payment plus an annual report due each year to the state. In Delaware, there's a $300 payment called the annual franchise fee tax. Both of these can be paid online directly to the state. You can also check out our guides on how to submit these filings for each state. And with that, are you ready to form your US LLC? Well, you know what to do. Let Doula help and let's do it. It is possible to launch and grow a US LLC business from anywhere in the world without the need for US citizenship. And it's also possible to do it on your own. But there are a lot of moving pieces here, so it can be helpful to have a hands-on long-term partner that can take you through the business formation process smoothly and accurately. At the end of the day, it's your business, your choice regarding whether or not you decide to launch a US business and how you go about doing it. But here's the thing. If you're ready to open a US LLC, but want some help with the paperwork, the banking and tax and compliance, we are here to help. Simply get started by answering a few questions and we'll take it over from there. You're only a few minutes or a few clicks away from taking your dream idea and turning it into your dream business so that you can have access to the US financial ecosystem and sell to US customers from anywhere in the world while transacting in the US dollar. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and we're here to help you take your dream idea and turn it into your dream business today. Thanks for watching and tune in for more videos just like this.